Hey, it's Pete, welcome to the workshop. This week I'm taking advantage of the nice weather outside to get some work done on our carnival ride restoration. I'm gonna be reaching out for some help with this project, so be sure to stick around to see what I'm looking for. I spent some time getting the trailer street legal. Here in Pennsylvania, and I assume probably in other states, there is a registration exception for carnival rides when the ride is built as an integral part of the trailer. And that's what we have here. So although I don't need a license plate for this ride, I thought it might be a good idea to make a plate to make it clear that this is in fact a carnival ride. I found some text online that has been used on similar plates and designed a plate that I could print on my flatbed printer. This printer uses a UV cure ink and I've shown it here on the channel before. I'll leave a link at the top of the screen to a video where I go into more detail about the printer if you're interested. I also bought a cheap set of magnetic trailer lights that could be put on as needed. I pulled out one set of cross braces thinking that might make it easier to pull the shaft out and I think that was the correct decision. It was also a lot easier to remove the paint when they weren't attached to the rest of the tower. Speaking of which, I've been continuing to strip the paint as I've had free time between other jobs. The biggest expense here was I didn't have a hitch with a 2 and 5 16 inch ball, so I had to get one. So I'm heading over to the uh, day job to borrow a forklift to try to pull the central shaft out of the ride, and I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with how the thing uh, pulls back there. It's uh, tracking straight and uh, uh, overall I, I don't really notice it's back there very much so I'm kind of pleased with that. I'm real curious to see what we're gonna find when we get over there. I, I'm concerned that there might be a sleeve inside uh, the column there where the bolt went through and uh, if that's the case then we might run into some problems. So I got the ride moved and had a little bit of help over there. We pulled off the very top crown first. The forklift didn't have enough reach to pull the shaft, so we took the whole top of the tower off. I want to come in from the other side, though. Yeah. Because this side is open. Yep.
The trailer leveling jacks were causing me some problems, so they had to go. This whole configuration here is not what I was expecting when I took this apart. I expected some sort of sleeve that uh, this bolt was holding on. That's not what I'm seeing in here, so I need to get this cleaned out, uh, get the grease off of it that's hiding whatever's going on in there so I can figure out exactly how this was originally meant to go together and what that bolt was supposed to do. This ring here seems to have no function. And if you pumped enough grease into here, I think all it would do would be to lift that up. There's something right there. That's a broken cotter pin, and this ring would have originally been on there, and that would have been just holding it down. All right. Okay, after a little bit of mechanical archaeology, I think I have an idea what's going on here. This collar is not supposed to be welded to this shaft. And even though this weld looks way better than the one we cut off, uh, I think that was also a repair. I think originally this collar was supposed to be uh, welded to the top of the main sprocket. And this shaft would slip down into it and uh, the bolt would go through to tie it together. This hole here, I think, was for excess grease to come out as well as any water would drain out of it. But I think its main function was to enable you to put the cotter pin in uh, to the central shaft that would be coming up through here. And part of what makes me think this is all correct is that right now, the way this is, this is the top of the tower. I can't slide this off because uh, this piece of tubing is not big enough to pass over this. Uh, so either it was all welded together at the factory and it was never intended to be repairable, or else uh, this is just a number of different repairs that happened over the years. This cracked and the bolt was probably wallowed out, so they decided to weld that. And uh, eventually the entire thing just became welded as a solid piece. At least that's my working theory right now. Uh, because as it sits right now, I can't get uh, the bearing off because I can't get this plate off because this is in the way. So I'm going to have to develop a game plan here and decide if I want to cut this off and uh, make a new sleeve and put it back to the way I believe it originally was. Uh, that would also ensure that the load would be equally shared with the bearing at the top of the bearing at the bottom. If there was just uh, a small amount of looseness in this bolt, that would allow this shaft to come down and uh, be able to take the, take the load on both bearings. Uh, it would also, depending on what you used as a bolt, it could be a shear point uh, that if something were to stop the ride, that that bolt could actually just shear off as a, as a safety item. So I'm going to have to give that some thought, but that's where we are with it right now. I had hoped I was going to be soaking the big main bearing, but that's not going to obviously happen tonight. So these are the stubs that the sweeps slide onto, and to me they look like they're paper thin. So I want to replace them, 
I don't know if this is an inserted piece into this or if this is just turned down from this or exactly what we're looking for. I'm thinking that I may cut these off flush and um, just make a piece that goes in place, maybe even a solid piece. Uh, I want to get the paint off and see if I can see any sign of a seam line here between this piece and this piece. So I'm assuming they're two pieces, but I don't know that for a fact. Most of the other assumptions I've made about this ride have been wrong. But I don't want to just cut it off without at least trying to investigate what's going on. I don't want to get into a situation I can't recover from. Looks like a ball bearing that sheared in half. This is mostly exploratory surgery. I'm not planning on reusing this. Just want to see uh, what happened to it and see if we can find a part number anywhere so I can buy a replacement. If not, we'll just have to go by the uh, size of the ID and the OD. It's another bearing with a flat spot. Alright, well I think it's pretty safe to say that this ball bearing is worn out. Uh, there's an A right there. Unfortunately, it got into the rust. We might just let this soak in evapo rust and see if we can get anywhere with that. Close up of these bearings that were pulled out of there. It looks deflated. Alright, it's now the next morning. Let's see what, if anything, this is revealed for us. Okay, turns out the bearing said Etna Ball and Roller Bearing Company, and it's a part number E25. Still available, costs about $80. All right, this is the center of the main drive sprocket. And it seems to me like there needs to be some sort of bearing surface in here. Uh, oh. Definitely something in here. There it is. This is split in two pieces because there was a grease fitting in the middle of it. But boy, is this all rough. Wow. That should be somewhat of a press fit there. This is really a scored up mess in here. I'm gonna have to do some thinking about how I wanna handle this. Okay, the other problem we have is the central support shaft. It's very heavily scored, so even if I replace the bushing inside of the main sprocket, uh, it's gonna get chewed up again really fast. And this part here is, there's nothing really to it. It's just a shaft, a collar, and some wings uh, welded on. Uh, so, it wouldn't be a hard part to make at all. Uh, pretty easy, pretty cheap even. The hard part is the way it's welded to that uh, surface down there. That is really burned in. So here's the deal, these are not complicated problems. From a machining standpoint, they're all fairly easy fixes. My issue, these are big problems. These are big pieces that I don't have large enough equipment to handle. To review, the two inch support shaft is badly scored and needs to be addressed. The only way I can see to fix this is to cut it off and either turn it down or make a brand new one. 
I don't have a torch, so that means a lot of grinding, but the part itself is fairly simple. And we can buy a new thrust bearing for the bottom. The sprocket has a bronze bushing pressed in that is scored and it's spun in the bore, at least the upper few inches, so the bore needs to be cleaned up and a new bushing fitted. I imagine either on a large mill or something like a vertical turret lathe. I also need a large enough press to get the old bushing out. I need to cut the sleeve off the bottom of the central shaft and re-weld that to the sprocket tube. Then I can get the top of the tower plate off and inspect the big thrust bearing. I also need to determine if there was ever a bushing at the top of the tower. It seems like there should have been. The shaft is also scored up there and should probably be cleaned up. And finally we need to make new stubs for the sweeps to slip over. So now that I've laid out the issues that I'm facing, if you have any ideas on how to attack these different problems, or maybe you have some equipment uh, appropriate for taking care of these sorts of situations, reach out to me. Uh, as long as you don't mind me showing up with a camera so that I can document it for the channel, I'm pretty much willing to load these parts up in a truck and, and drive them anywhere within reasonable distance. If it means getting uh, the project on the road, then I'm all for it. If you like projects like this, click those links to the left and come along for the ride.